Yeah, good start. Okay, welcome. Um, this uh, was a buff uh, in the buff session. I got shifted around a couple of times. That's why we're not in bow, but uh, I tried to set up something that we can properly discuss. Um, I prepared a Gobi uh, page for this uh, buff, uh, auto package test gating migration. And I do hope that some people are joining in in the uh, ISC stream, especially uh, Niels from the uh, release team, and uh, maybe later uh, Steve Langesack, who uh, offered help to actually get some of this work done. Um, Antonio also has the uh, other mic uh, headset uh, running the Depsy uh, service. And I started. Um, actually working on this uh, about last uh, December or so. I said, well, I do want to have this in Debian. Nobody's doing the work, so I'm going to do the work. So uh, this session, I'd like to uh, briefly explain what I want, um, what the current status is, a little bit of the technical background, why it's not just simple one place fixing it. Um, we had a discussion on Debian Devil uh, in January, I think. There were some concerns, so I'd like to discuss that here in the open as well. Uh, there are some possible choices on how we're going to do this. And uh, I added some links, uh, one of them being an example of uh, Ubuntu filing uh, bugs where uh, uh, for their migration it, it was blocking. So. In general, my idea is that I want something similar as what Ubuntu is doing. Um, that uh, what we're gonna, what I want to do is that we're testing in testing instead of the current setup where we're testing uh, unstable. Uh, currently, uh, all the auto package testers. Uh, I hope everybody here knows what that is. But a package can define a set of tests that are run on a central server after build in a the environment where it's going to be used. Now, uh, what we currently do is we run these tests, uh, and that's it. Uh, currently, nothing happens with this information except for maintainers looking at it. But what Ubuntu is doing is they're uh, testing a, uh, a package that is, well, in what we call unstable, and test it in testing such that you can see if when the package migrates, it would break testing, or at least not only itself, but also uh, reverse dependencies. And that's the important thing, that you can actually test if it breaks other things, which typically uh, an uploader would not necessarily test, especially if you're uh, having a big uh, reverse dependency chain. Um, so my goal would be that we end up in, in Debian doing the same thing, and that we block migration if there's regression in auto package test. Grab a microphone. So a weakness of that in the current yeah. auto package it's test. It's off, it's off. I, I turned that one on, so. Uh, maybe the audio is in. Check, check. OK. Is that better? Oh. Um, so a weakness in that is that the tests are run on, say, the leaf package, but then the tests fail. What I've noticed just, um, just during DevConf is the package that fails, it's actually not easy to pick up what package caused that. It was actually it wasn't one of the trigger packages. It was another package that was brought in that's been updated. Um, and that package was um, moved from 1.2 to 1.10, and that caused the tests to fail in the package that actually re was reported. Uh, at least in Ubuntu instance of Britney proposed migration, uh, under each package you get a set of results which show you which package triggered and why which package got triggered, and each test results are separate. Right, right, right. And in addition, in addition, uh, we have done a lot of work to make sure that we do not test broken packages against broken packages. 
such that if you're trying to migrate this particular package, it will trigger the tests of all the reverse dependencies that are currently in testing, not in unstable, such that you're testing against things that did not regress yet. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the really the idea is to take the current testing, which apparently must work, and if adding one package breaks it, then it's that package or it's dependencies of still, uh, I mean, you can have version uh, dependencies, but if you would add that package to uh, testing, it would break testing. Can I say something? What are the tests in the... Mike, please. So uh, just for introduction, I'm sort of maintaining this stuff in Ubuntu now since Martin left the company, so um, a bit of insight into how we're doing this here. And I know what you're saying is, uh, you try and trigger for each upload, right? But we have we still have this problem in Ubuntu. We, we, we haven't managed to get down to the case where for each test result, only one package has changed since yeah. the last test, right? Yeah. Because you, you might trigger for a dependency, but then maybe a dependency of the dependency has changed, and that's the thing that's breaking it. Or like maybe we don't trigger for build dependencies, or like recommends, or whatever, you know, somewhere down the stack, right? Right. So I think ideally, you, prob you, you do want to get to a place where every single change is triggering a test result. But if you, if you think about how many tests this is going to trigger. This is an extremely, extremely large number of tests, right? And we're, and we're not there in Ubuntu yet, we're not. We're trying to get as close as we can, but we don't have the capacity, and honestly, it's, it's a lot of analysis to do as well for every upload, right, to go all the way. Think, think about uploading glibc, right? It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, oh, so even just the direct depends, that's, that's bad enough, but then everything else that transitively down the stack. So, so what the release team has uh, uh, until now uh, said, uh, what we uh, will do in Debian once this works is uh, change the age of package. The, the age. So the time it takes to migrate from unstable to testing. So if your package has an auto package test or is that then and uh, it passes all the regression tests, the age will be reduced. Mm -hmm. That's what they promised now. So in, the, in the, this specific case, the package itself passes all its own tests. So that will have its age produced and will go in earlier. But the package that is, to, that is picking up the error, yeah. all right? Yes. Because we can't run enough tests, we, we, we fail to pick up that actually this is in the dependency and it's the, um, because you, what you need to do sometimes is, is, is pick up what version was run um, the last time and, tr and track back to what was actually installed. Yeah, okay. but, but that's okay. a problem today. So yeah. we're so just not going to solve everything. So in indeed, my, my response to that is, uh, what it, however you look at it, it the, the, the situation at least for the quality of testing will improve. I mean, it, indeed, and one of the items that I put in the list, indeed, that it, there's a social concern of, of you as, as a package. But it is, it is the so dependency of the section. So I'm not sure if this mic works, yeah, is it? Okay, um, so that is a concern, it is valid. However, it's quite minority one, and it is a problem that I would like to have. The majority of bugs that I see now is where uh, a new upstream release is uploaded into Debian. Right. That package alone fails its own auto package test. Right. It migrates to testing. Uh, Ubuntu syncs it and it gets stuck and proposed forever yeah. and furthermore it starts breaking all the reverse dependencies because it itself is just broken. <laughs> right. Okay and, and, and at least catching that class of bugs will unveil your bug but your bug is actually a much smaller subset than the new thing just broken. Yeah. C c clearly in, the, in the, practice. The, 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 the uploaded package needs to have its auto package test run quickly enough that the tests are there before it migrates. That's, that's critical. So you are there before it they're within half an hour. So I guess one way that you... I have the microphone. Yeah. One way that... Is this working? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, cool. So one way you could do this in Debian, and we can't... We, as far as we could do it in Ubuntu, but you could, I suppose, cause a failing test to file a bug against the package, right? Yeah. And then in the case where the maintainer decides to send a different package, then this, is just, this is a matter of bug manipulation at that point. Yeah, so yeah, this, is, this is really on how we're going to handle it. Yeah, I mean... Uh, suggesting it as possibly a solution. Because if you just have, like, here's a, a separate thing which is blocking the package somewhere over there, right? And this is like the release team is dealing with overriding these things, then yeah. 
then it's annoying for the maintainer because then they have to go and bug the release team and say, no, this really isn't my problem now. And then mm. there's back and forth with the release team, like someone else trying to analyze the log, all this stuff, right? And we have yeah. this in Ubuntu, but I guess we've sort of trained ourselves to be on the more lenient side in the Ubuntu release team. No, so I, I think to start with, I, I, I think what uh, at least Niels promised the project in his email uh, is indeed, uh, we start with this aging, we, we implement the stuff, we start with the aging, and I think what... Are you going to increase the age if things are regressing? I do hope so, but I haven't heard the statement of the release team on right, that. Right, okay. But and I do request that, yes. And, and then another thing that security team, at least in Ubuntu, likes a lot is that you should be running out a package test uh, in stable releases for the proposed up updates, um, such that the updates and security uploads do not regress stable releases. It's in my miscellaneous ideas <laughs> okay. on my Gobi okay. page. Uh, it's not there yet because we don't have uh, the, we don't have the container to to have this actually for the security team. So um, I tried to say this. Okay, what, what will happen is that the DebCI support is going to be generic enough that it doesn't care if it's Brittany requesting something against testing or security team asking something against table. So uh, the plan is that that's going to be supported and. Yeah, I think currently the security team doesn't have a sort of proposed thing. So, I mean, they just have the, the security archive. So this needs to yeah. fit, be fixed first. Uh, uh, if I get this to run in this project that I'm now on the table works reasonably, I hope I can take the next challenge on the uh, PPA bike shed thing. But uh, that could solve a couple of these things as well. And then this could be used there as well. Um, so indeed, uh, the, 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 w one of the choices that also came up in the discussion in the beginning of the year is, um, in principle, migration is a matter of uh, Brittany, which is the, uh, the implementation of the release team that decides if a package can migrate. Uh, now, this is where uh, Ubuntu implemented this, uh, this logic, and they just say, well, it, it, it's not there, and it, for the Ubuntu maintainers, uh, there's a possibility, I guess, to overwrite. And, and tweak a bit. Uh, probably it doesn't scale in Debian to put this all on the release team if stuff needs to be over, uh, overwritten often. Uh, at least that was, uh, I guess, a fair, uh, fair concern. So uh, another possibility that was raised to um, indeed interact with the BTS to indeed file the bug. Um, but what I what I think we, in, in that case, we really need to do is not only inform the maintainer of the package that is not going to migrate, but also inform the maintainer of the, uh, especially for reverse dependencies that trigger the block. Because the maintainer knows what he changed in the upload. The maintainer of the reverse dependency knows what he's testing. And I really think that they should figure it out together <laughs> why it's not migrating and what fails, instead of just the maintainer of the one that wants to have his package uh, migrate. And I guess that is really a social uh, thing. So we have to align on that and have enough traction that that's, that's feasible. Um, in, in practice, we find that the two people argue between themselves and say, no, it's your problem. And then a third person comes in and fixes both packages, sometimes by means of removal. <laughs> right. Uh, in the end, uh, for, for migration, it's the release team that uh, is there. I mean, The final one. Right. Yeah, but I think we need to make a parallel with what happens with uh, buildability of packages and archive rebuilds and initial build when the package first appears. Both about the fact that uh, you cannot test all reverse dependencies. We don't rebuild everything on the Debian side uh, when new package appears. That's not really a problem because you can catch all, bu all bugs later on doing archive rebuilds and then uh, out, of, uh, well, out of the normal process. Right. Way. And then uh, about this, uh, this uh, problem of identifying which uh, package is the root cause for a problem, 
we do that all the time with uh, FTDFS bugs. I mean, we just use the VTS and bugs get moved from one package to another and I don't see it as a uh, real problem. It just happens, well, of course, sometimes bugs are filed, uh, there's only one root cause and several bugs are filed and they get merged, but uh, it's better when it doesn't happen, but when it happens, it's no big deal. Yeah. Obviously, for me, as the one now trying to implement it, it would be way easier for me to implement it at Brittany because basically Ubuntu did the work. But mm. that's uh, <laughs> not an extremely good argument uh, for yeah. not doing it via the BTS. But I, I, it is, I'm, for me, it's an argument. Yeah. Uh, implementing stuff in Brittany and supporting hints in Brittany is useful for the release team. If the release team has a buy in into all of these out of package tests and they embrace it and they like it, uh, what the, we the found. The release team really likes it. The, the comment was during the release, what are you going to do right after the release? And it said, I'll bug Elbrus when I get my patch. Yeah. And, and what is it? Yeah. And, and in Ubuntu release team, at least the 8, 10 people who have the access rights to commit hints for Brittany. There are hints specific for the auto package tests in terms of ignore O tests triggered by this package or ignore the specific chain of packages on specific architectures or any architecture for specific version or just any like the normal set of hints that you can override the test because ideally you want to. Yes, this has regressed in testing, or this has regressed in stable, and but we know about it. There is a bug file about it, and then you just uh, override it in Britney hints, and at least the rest of the tests are still run, and the rest of the tests are still being monitored to not regress further. <laughs> right. So bugs are useful for people and package maintainers to bounce things between themselves, but hints are useful for release team to do releasey things. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I guess in that sense, then you're, as the Dutch expression goes, two captains on the same ship. If you file RC bugs for uh, out of package testers and you implement it in Brittany, I think you're doing it sort of twice. You, you can also kind of split the problem in two, right? There's, there's the request, the, the halfway you request the tests from the CI infrastructure, right? Which is, which is one part. And then there's the part where you sort of collect the results back and then do something with them to implement the blocking of the packages. Yeah, so I, I skipped that part because we immediately yeah. went to I know the we, comments yeah, from okay. the audience. We're going into the weeds, but like Ubuntu's obviously done both of those halves in Brittany, but it's, it would be possible in theory to split that, right? And have Brittany request the tests, and then when it collects the results, instead of putting them back to Brittany, filing the bugs instead. No, so so uh, my idea on that is if, if uh, we as a project really want to go this via the BTS, I think it makes most sense to not implement the blocking in Brittany, right. but just rely on I'm the saying. BTS to make sure that That is sure what I'm saying, but you still need to request the tests from somewhere right, right. in the first right. place. And that it, it, and it feels will, like and it does make sense for Brittany and we will to have create, uh, I mean, if I go that route, I will create a mechanism to actually file these bugs in the BTS in the proper, uh, to the package that tries to migrate. But then the BTS can handle it if it's RC yeah. it blocks and if it gets downgraded. Or like so they would be RC by default? Mike? And then you could right, right, but the question them, was if they would be them. RC by default. But um, so it's not an RC bug if your auto package test fails. What I consider and Ubuntu considers uh, it's a RC bug if there's a regression in the auto package test. So if it passed in the past and now it fails, then there's something that needs to be fixed. Well, but that's covered by the normal. Um, testing migration rules. I mean, yeah. if, if your bug uh, affects both the version testing and unstable, it can, it, can it can still be RC and not block the package. Right. So it just works perfectly in our case. No, it will only affect the version in unstable and not no, the one in testing. No, because if you, if you if the, well, in the case of, um, of a problem. Yeah, the test, test, passed, yeah. Then it's, then it's, yeah. then it's, from my point of view, it's fine. No, I, what I want to do now is improve the situation or, or make sure that the situation in testing doesn't regress. If somebody wants to do something on, on failing out of package test and start filing bugs for that, fine, yeah, anybody can implement that. What I'm working on is pre I want to prevent uh, regression in testing by implementing this. So then the version that the RC bug would be on is the one in unstable and not the one in testing. Because there, everything was fine. Because it's a regression and not uh, something that always failed. 
regarding filing RC bugs, I would be careful to not file them right when the test pass, uh, fails. Just after a few days, uh, the, the tests are stuck in the migration uh, because sometimes there are, ah, thanks. Sometimes there are flaky tests, so uh, they could cause a lot of uh, bugs to be filed to the BTS. So uh, if the release team could delay the migration. So, so can you, can you yeah, explain I start a little over. bit more clear? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when a, okay. <laughs> Uh, so when an auto package test fails in a package or the, in the dependence, uh, reverse dependency chain, it gets blocked in Ubuntu. Uh, it doesn't migrate to release packet from proposed, right? And if we do the same with Debian, so we, bo we block the migration for a few days and wait to uh, have it cleared up by maintainers without any bugs filed, uh, we would find a lot less bugs to Innocent maintainers. Who okay, so the proposal would be to raise the age. Yes, and, and after four that, days or. But, but how to inform the people that need to fix anything? Uh, at, the, uh, at Ubuntu, we have a nice page showing the, mic, the in, queue. In, 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 Debian, in Debian, my way of communicating to the maintainer is the BTS. Yes. What so, so what I could do is, is file a bug, say I'm going to raise it in three days, but I have to file a bug, I think. Uh, we of, that, oftentimes we face bugs which are failing for the first time, but passing the second because there are, there are network issues and those are flaky tests. And yeah. the transients can okay. cause a lot of bugs to be filed and everyone will be so, really, really unhappy about that. Can somebody write French in? Uh, the transient bugs is important because like for example, once we took Perl transition and the new Perl got uploaded, the first uh, 1,000 test runs, uh, they all failed because they could not be installed because there was an uninstallability in, in, in the unstable pocket, effectively, sweet. And then once we rebuilt all the packages, they started to be installable, but obviously you had to uh, run the tests with uh, everything from unstable rather than just Perl from unstable. And, and so the first few runs, we had about 1,000 failures, which were all transient and known that we need to rerun the tests in a specific way. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a, 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 a So if a, you a, file 6,000 bugs, I think people will complain yeah. effectively, yeah. if you know that it's a single class issue of transient failures rather than real failures. But again, I don't see this as a hard problem. It means it's solved for the archive rebuilds. The way it works is that when you do uh, a full rebuild, you get a list of everything that fails, and you try to identify first if there are big classes of new failures. Yeah. And if there's like 500 new failures related to Perl, you just don't file those bugs. And but but this is going to run automatically. Yeah? I'm not going to yeah, trigger no, I mean, it. I don't, I don't think that we should ever file bugs in a fully automatic yeah, way. Not at first, at least. Uh, probably never. I mean, it doesn't cost that much to have a human in the loop at some point. Yeah, Even so, so and you can have, well, uh, very much uh, semi-automated process, and that works really well. But then how am I going to inform the right people? Because then it just gets, if, if I don't block in, in Brittany, and I don't file the, the RC bug, then it, it's going to migrate. You should file the bugs. You're asking him to yeah, but that's you, not ah, sustainable on, that because that's, 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 it's not a rebuild that you do when, when you can. It's something that's running all the time, so yeah. it's not possible to have it, someone review it. It runs every it. hour now. Eh? It's going to run every hour. It's going to try and do this. So let, let, let me do an analogy. So today we have uh, migration blocking due to few parts regression. So there's not necessarily a bug in the BTS, so the maintainer needs to care about it, their packages be migrating to testing and they, they have to go yeah. to the track and check why it's not migrating. So it's going to be the same thing. It, that's, that it could, could be the same thing. That, yeah. That's sort of also what I tried to get yeah. out of this bug. If, if, if how, how, I mean, from the perspective of implementing in one place, huh, it, it's Brittany that decides on what migrates or not. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a good argument of saying, okay, this is in the hand of, of the release team in that sense. Um, I find the, the, the PO, um, I, uh, I think the PO part maintainer is doing a great job of also filing bugs, but the PO part result in itself is already blocking. Yes. And yeah, you have to find it out some way, and 
I, I'm not fully comfortable currently how that goes. I mean, if he if he's on holiday for for three weeks, you're not getting these these bugs, yes. and your package is still still blocked, and you're not notified. Well, in in the end, what we want is to have good stable releases. I mean, if for some time there's uh, no bugs getting filed, it's not such a big deal as long as you can't go back. And so what? I mean, we can fix things later on. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I uh, I I think. Uh, in the part of the ecosystem that Debian is, it's, I don't, uh, I care most for Debian, but I don't only care for Debian. I mean, uh, I'm not, an, uh, I'm not hardly doing anything in Ubuntu, but that's a derivative that does it differently than we do, and they take our packages. It does influence that as well. So, um, wow, this is loud now. Um, I'm not sure what the problem is for filing bugs as long as we don't file them immediately. So the, the prevention of not filing them immediately seems sane to avoid like flaky tests, whatever. Uh, but after that, what is the problem of filing the bug? Like once you know that this test is actually failing, right? Like we avoid fake flaky tests. What's the issue with filing bugs? Can you define flaky tests? <laughs> oh, a transient. Yeah, a test that fails the first time you run it, but then you run it again and succeed. Immediately run it again. Well, take the Eventually, when you run it again. Yeah, but then how do you know whether to run it again? I suppose is the problem. Right. right? That how was the question that I had. Like, how do you rerun the test? Like, you you said somebody that you notices, were and the then manual. then people trigger the test to run again. So it's manual. And, and, and then eventually Get the mic, please. So like I've been rerunning tests to make my package migrate because like I upload systemd quite often in Ubuntu and it triggers a few tests, and then uh, when I uh, when I see regressions and when I retry them and I see that they passed on retry, I file bugs with vengeance and I'm like this is it flaky test which is not consistently passing it, it it passed three runs out of ten this is not acceptable it's blocking my work and I'm like please fix this <laughs> so like you know retrying the tests a few times like three or four times and then if it still fails after a week then file automatic bug and I think it should be fine in terms of if your test cannot pass five times in a row something is bad so or at least once out of five runs yeah <laughs> So the way this is handled for archive rebuilds, you have to speak. So the so way this is handled for archive rebuilds that before, well, when a, when a build failed, it just retried immediately just to avoid all the random failures. Right, right. It can be problematic to retry all, uh, immediately because, for example, a mirror didn't sync and we get failures in downloading a package twice a row. So uh, giving some time can be useful. Yeah, but given there's a human in the loop, you see it at the time when you look at the whole list of failures and you don't file bugs for those. I mean, all this has been solved. Uh, we're not reinventing something new here. I mean, we kind of are, though, because we're, we're talking about a more automated process than what you do for archive rebuilds, right? Yeah. This is, we're not saying, let's do tests and have somebody look at the list and decide which ones oh, are bad and then file bugs. Doing. That is not a reasonable task to ask somebody to take on all of the time, right? If you want to have this as a systematic... Uh, thing that's in the way of, of migration to testing. Like, is I, would, yeah. uh, I would prefer uh, filing bugs about issues uh, which the maintainer can act upon. Uh, for example, if there is a failing mirror around uh, and you get 100 bugs for random packages, it doesn't help anyone and maintainers get upset. I think you could probably think about things like safety valves and stuff, right? Like if something's crashing down around you, then like you see 10,000 bugs at one time, then perhaps just don't file those and like take a step back for a bit. I don't know, like yeah. just, just, you know, I don't know, There's, you can think about things you might do, right? Yeah, I think... Uh, if the archive goes down, then, you, yeah. then you'll see every build failing, and if you or see if every build failing... Or how to package test itself. Right? Yeah, it or like, you know, if Perl always. makes all of its <laughs> modules uninstallable when they run, like you'll, you'll suddenly see like 2,000 failures at once, right? And you might be able to encode, express, like perhaps this is something to look at and not do the automatic stuff on. Because, I mean... But then, in, um, doesn't Brittany already check for installability before anything? So maybe 
is not just is not going to request tests but if it knows just, that parallel modules are not installable. But that's just from dependency version kind of thing. If there's a mistake in that, it determines okay. wrong, right? Mike, let's talk about Get, later. Um, can I, I have a question about the CI .net actually. Yes. Um, I believe you have capacity problems there. Is that true? And um, is that true? First we, of all, we had that in the past. Today yeah, is so a lot better. Now. And I will also believe that you're only running tests inside containers and not inside full VMs, right? So you can't run uh, I'm also full machine isolation tests. What's maybe there's a status update there? Yeah, I, I'm also here. working on that. So we have a QMU backend now. So I'm. Ironing that out, and I want to switch to that for at least the package that say they need yeah. IVM. Do you have enough machine capacity for like every Perl upload triggering yeah, uh, so 5,000 tests um, and getting through those in a reasonable time? Right. Okay. We so the container tests run on Amazon, and we basically have infinite resources there, so it's fine. The for VMs it doesn't work because Amazon doesn't support nested KVM, so I'm gonna need to. Last time I checked it, it, it didn't. Unless you know something. In, in Ubuntu, we don't use nested KVM. We talk over right. OpenStack API to launch the VM, and you run the tests over right, SSH. Yeah, we, we don't have an OpenStack available. But can you not spin up an Amazon VM and use SSH runner to run it? Maybe, yeah. And then shut down the VM and right. discard it, such right. that you only use the as if bare metal host. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Put it in the ideas. But they do need nested KVM for some tests, right? For like some, system yeah. D and some 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 yeah. stuff just won't work. But I guess you can deal with that. Yeah, some stuff. Yeah, the, the point is that I I don't really want to be tied to the Amazon infrastructure yeah. or anyone else. So I just want to use them as cheap providers of machines. Yeah. So you, maybe you can look at the how the SSH setup script for for Nova works in auto package yeah. tests and kind of tweak Absolutely. that for Amazon maybe. I, I know I'm late, but Hi. concerning the VMs, basically we did something similar. We are doing Packer, and we are creating virtual machines. We are deploying, and we are destroying virtual machines. And you could use that for builders. If you, we already did that with the GitHub, uh, a full pipeline starting in the VM creation, uh, using Preseed, and you could put there everything you need to build whatever you need to do a test. And at the end, you could uh, just remove the VM after you finish the test. And you can rewrite that for any technology, KVM or send, because. Yeah, sure, there, there, there are ways to fix it. So the, the, the point is that I am started working on it and Good. have plans to do it in the okay. future. I, I had the impression that you were really stu struggling for hardware and was no. wondering what the status of that was. Cool. Other Wh that, the question was which architectures? Yes, so we have Intel now. We, I have access to a PowerPC64 OpenStack by the PowerPC64 people. And we had ARM64, but it didn't work out because there was like, it's not really ready-made production hardware, so lots of issues there. But uh, we, we should have PowerPC64 in the near future. I'm asking uh, Niels uh, if he likes to raise the uh, uh, age, and he's happy to do that. So on regression, at least, also have the age raised. Um, yeah, my aim was actually to have this uh, really early in the uh, Buster release cycle, such that we could uh, start uh, experimental, uh, experimental, experimenting early. Uh, Sorry, it didn't happen. I um, uh, didn't have the time, but I'm picking it up, up right now again. So uh, I do hope that we're not having just, just before the buster <laughs> release cycle to have this. But Can I ask you one implementy kind of question? Um, so as I'm maintaining this on the Ubuntu side, I'm wondering if you're thinking of borrowing our cloud running stuff that we're using there or not. And if, if you are, 
Do I'm not do considering any change to the infrastructure no. because that's not my. So the thing about picking up uploads and picking up requests and dispatching requests, like you're not you're not concerned I've, with that. I've been so discussing yeah. the interface yeah, with so Brittany and. Yeah right. So there's going to be an interface for Deb and CI to receive test requests, uh -huh. and that's what Brittany is going to use. Yeah, yeah and so the release team works with Brittany slightly different than in Ubuntu, so they really have two def uh, uh, different runners. It's Brittany 1 that does all the uh, interaction, and Brittany 2 is not talking to the world. Yeah, sure. So we, we have this system of, like, we have, like, a box somewhere in the cloud, which is, like, receiving requests from... Uh, so Brittany is, like, putting uh, AMQP requests into a queue, and the box is picking them up and dispatching them and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's, yeah. so Brittany's going to be doing the That's going to be thing? a Devon CI a like, API, HTTP API. Okay, so I, mean, I just wondered if you're planning to use the same thing that we developed, and if so, if you wanted oh, no, like me to help you with that. But no, Where is okay. it? Where is it, the thing you developed? Why is it? Where is it? Oh, it's on Launchpad, Git, the Ubuntu release team. It's called Auto Package Test Cloud. Basically, just like connect to these MQP queues, receive the requests, and call auto package tests with the right parameters yeah. from a config file. Yeah, because during the QA both, we were discussing uh, working on a common scheduler yeah. for QA tests, right. and okay. that could be relevant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, one yeah. thing to say, a uh, lesson that we learned there is that it's quite useful to have multiple queues of requests. So if you have like Perl, which is triggering 5,000 tests, mm -hmm. you don't want any other small uploads to have to go to the back of that queue, right. ideally, right? So we have like a threshold, I think it's like 20, maybe? So if you trigger more than 20 tests, you go into this different queue, huge, we call it. Okay. And then everything else stays like in a normal oh, that's queue. That's the reason so like, why it exists. It was. Yeah, and then you round robin between these queues, right? So that yeah. you don't get denial of service. Yeah, like AMQPU priority already supports priority, so we can okay. use a lower priority to anything that's yeah, too much. But we, we, want, we like round robin between them, I don't know. So you don't get starvation of the huge queue by the normal queue as well. You get mm -hmm. like, things going between both of them. Okay. okay, I think we have two minutes left. So um, let's try to round up. Uh, what I do want to mention, so uh, the current state is that I've uh, had a version one of the changes required to auto package test. Uh, I now have a version two, which is a different implement implementation, which makes it more uh, generic, also for other derivatives, because it doesn't need hard coding, uh, Debian or Ubuntu or Kali, sync, pending. Um, well, you don't want to keep on adding all the derivatives to that file. It just doesn't make sense. Um, Antonio and I have discussed uh, what needs to be changed to Tepsi. I think that's rather limited. Uh, so the big thing next is to work on what Debian would need in, uh, in Brittany. Um, I already have long time access and probably Niels is also uh, dropping in to help me there. Steve is uh, willing to help, so uh, uh, that should be uh, well, uh, the next challenge. So can we agree on the bug handling part? To um, so I'll first... Um, Make sure that Brittany is aware, and uh, then I guess uh, the release team will uh, activate the age such that at least it, uh, uh, yeah, you reduce age when everything's fine, and it increases age uh, when it's not. Uh, obviously, uh, I will definitely not start uh, automatic bug filing. Uh, definitely not in the beginning. Um, and actually. How I hear it, I'm not sure that automatic filing is a great way, but... Don't do that, please. No, I mean, for bug filing, the way you should do it is start with manual bug filing and then grow up slowly into... Uh, yeah, so similar like uh, um, a PO Parts is doing it right now, but... Or archive we, rebuilds. Uh, uh, we are meeting with Balin during lunch. Uh, I will show how I run the archive rebuilds. If someone else is interested, uh, just to get a grasp of... Uh, how much automation there is, uh, feel free to join. Uh, well, tell me. But I, I think we, we do have to uh, improve on the communication of, of if, if this is, if there's an issue towards the maintainers of actually indeed, especially with reverse dependency failing, it, it, we need to communicate that better because just waiting for maintainers to pick it up, it doesn't, it's not a good idea, I think. One intermediate step would be to send email to the maintainer without filing a bug, yeah. but still not 
in the first stages, right? Like first you need to have an idea of how many emails you would be sending. Right. <laughs> but once you have some idea that you would send like a not terrible amount of emails, then it could be emails instead of bugs. What does that really change? Only that it's not archived so yeah, much. Yeah, that then as you the don't BTS. have to go and close it. Like if it was a, 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 a transient error, you don't have to go and close it. It was just one. Yeah, email. I think I think so if we ever go that route, emails, right? Hmm? I I don't know. For Cinnamon, I get emails when CI fails. I get emails from Shenkings. I don't know. Shenkings yeah. <laughs> has Debian. nothing to do with this. No, I know, but I, I, I'm saying like this is the. I, it doesn't have anything to do with other package tests, but it sends yeah. emails when things fail, and then it turns out it was a transient error, and I get an email saying, "Oh, now it's passing again. It didn't do anything, and I don't care as long as." Yeah. It's useful. At, at least in Ubuntu, we started to send emails. Your package has not migrated for so many days, to and who? that email keeps repeating. I never got one. In Ubuntu, not in Debian. Right. Right. And it goes to the uploader if it's a direct upload rather than a sync from Debian. But yeah. I would love to get those, by the way. <laughs> Can you send them to me as yeah, well? We, we could probably Maybe that like in, in Tracker, you could add yes. a new subscription exactly. type? Yes. Yeah, and in, uh, the Debian, in the Debian maintainer dashboard in UDD, there's a possibility to have an RSS feed, so you can subscribe I'm to I'm subscribed it. to the Debian ones. Yeah. But it, it doesn't list the CI failures in the to-do list, so it doesn't show it in the, in the RSS feed. <laughs> I mean, that's Especially when Brittany is aware, it will be in the excuses anyway. Yeah. Or it could. Yeah, let's uh, stop here. Okay. Uh, any feedback, more info, uh, just email me or uh, actually there's a wiki where I try to keep uh, the progress going. So if you're interested, you can follow that as well. And there's the auto package test email list if you're yes. extremely interested. Okay, thank you for okay, thank your you. contributions. Thanks.